kids. Dalt here with you. Continuation, chapter 30. We're going to call it 30B. Uh, where the hell were we? With that said, I would give Jesus H. Christ himself a big toothless come swallowing blow job to be back in that car right now as a 36 year old, no 37, I'm actually now 40, year old man with a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu so I could Dr. Spock that motherfucker. Dear dog, God, universe, whatever, I would gladly give my eye teeth to choke this douchebag out in an old school, Old Testament like tribute beat down. No, I've got something even better than a cage fight fantasy. Emerging out of the blue. Put on your fucking seatbelts, kids. Daddy's home. Fantasy dream montage. Preface. Imagine if Hitler, Stalin, Bush, both senior and junior. Mao, David Lynch, MacGyver. Queen Isabella of Spain and Salvador Dali. And of course myself, Tee All had a powwow and smoke crack. DMT, dropped acid, all in efforts to plan a delectable torture scene starring yours truly, Gary Emig. I would like to prophesy something close to the following. The smoke clears, I spy Gary Emig walking the streets of Independence, Missouri. Missouri. <laughs> Wiping his bloated face from an afternoon of eateries and booze. Psst. My poison blow dart pierces the Midwestern air at such a velocity you can hear it rippling. The ether. Okay. As if God farted herself. It sort of like an aboriginal high powered velocity tranquilizer gun, you know, something that the A team would have used to get B onto an airplane. This little dart of bliss travels gleefully towards Gary's gullet. It has been laced with copious amounts of intermingled chemicals, whereby a renowned chemist of note might be stupefied to its toxicity. Plunging, plunging headlong into Gary's Adam's apple, the heavens open in jubilation. The, for, the torture, folks, has just begun. It's on like Donkey Kong, you fuck a face. Gary reaches for his throat in hopes of removing the dart. To no avail as he claps his face first onto the concrete, breaking his nose. Ouch. Here is where it gets trippy and somewhat fantastical, fantastically psychotic. Whoosh. An unmarked white van with blacked out windows swoops up alongside his unconscious body. Two of my large bodybuilder minions, I mean Hitler and Dali's, etc. Anyway, these minions that I have been imbued with the power to hypnotize control are from Gold's Gym Venice, Beach, California. They are completely subservient and are celestially ordered to serve my every ridiculous command like good mindless vapid devotees. I have received the reins and they are now fully under my spell as obedient automatons in service of my tyranny. I think I repeated myself twice, imagining essentially the same thing. I digress. Okay, so yada 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 poof. Gary is lying in the back of this unmarked van. We are now magically transported to a lone jumbo jet on a privately owned secure tarmac with top secret government grade clearance. It's fucking magical. We are kind of like beamed up or down, depending upon how you look to consider, like to consider, uh, quick movement. You know what I mean? I personally like beamed up because it reminds me of the Dingleberry Klingons and Captain Kirk. The goal ultimately is to get to there as quickly as we possibly can. There is a little spot in the world that lies in a vast desert region in Margo, Afghanistan. Let's just bypass all the other geographical peculiarities. Meanwhile, my minions have dressed Gary, who is, mind you, still unconscious. No, wait. He is stirring slightly in the back of the unmarked van. Nonetheless, he has been pulled out. Pulled out, pulled out, pulled out of his tattered blue jeans and greasy t-shirt and is now wear wearing a French maid outfit. We, we must have prepared for the flight and all. Think carny tranny like makeup has been professionally applied by an actual transsexual Maybelline makeup counter. Man girl that I've been flirting with via Craigslist. Plus I have also hand plucked the employee of the month from Hot dog on a stick from the 3rd Street Promenade flagship store in Santa Monica, California. A real chipper sh sh spot. <clears throat> 
This individual will help streamline any catering services that may be needed throughout my Guantanamo Bay like excursion because there's nothing like a good old ball game and a hot dog while you're working up an appetite per 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 Perpetrating a hallucinatory fiasco. <laughs> Woo! Needless to say, as Gary slips in and out of consciousness, now lying on a nail bed in a little caged off section for animals in this plane, he is disheveled and well, quite drugged. Somehow, my fantasy splits. I am now watching channeling, as in, you know, with my powerful mind, I'm channeling that shit. Two of the world's greatest homemakers, Margaret Thatcher and Martha Stewart. They're whipping up some handsome batches of dangerously toxic chocolate chip cookies. I think I'm having a pre-memory here. This is all happening. This is a happening that I'm purely recalling because, yes, by George, I was just with these two women the night before watching them prepare these little morsels of death. While I smoke crap and watch... Stock footage of both Timothy Leary and Jim Jones, as these two, not Tim or Jim, but Eminem, <laughs> Margaret and Martha, lace these little wonders of cookie dough goodness with chocolate morsels and a generous helping of x lax while also blending a sturdy amount of government-grade LSD. We are now getting ourselves a proper in-flight treat for Mr. Emig for when he comes to from the poisonous blow <coughs> dot. <laughs> Somewhere hovering around 30,000 feet. I'm not sure how or when all these particular fractions of my fantasy are being played out. However, let's say we can have it all from every angle. Why? Because it's my goddamn fantasy. That's why. So sit down and shut the fuck up. Televisions to the. Televisions are everywhere. Hail, televisions. Mm. And people are talking at me, us. I've made it a point in this fantasy to tape everyone during every every premeditated moment, from the beginning, from the masturbating and, and cruising the internet and picking up on my little shemale makeup counter, he, she, to meeting the Gold's Jim Hooligans. Everything has been filmed, the whole process. Kind of like a Orwellian Big Brother floating eye of God-like judgment. Capturing and replaying all transgressions that will be accumulating on my little portable traveling flicker board cinema slash theater that I will be continuously filtering through multiple little film projectors onto white screens everywhere. Fuck it. I've decided that this event will be co-sponsored by Samsung. Which will also supply me with flat screens. No matter where we go, there will be visuals. I don't know what editor I want to pay in ketamine to do this service for me, but either by force or charm, it shall be done. This will be a nice apparatus to have for me to voyeuristically taunt my own sense of narcissism. <laughs> and also to cement my nutter butter aptitude to the captured. I shall always rule by obscurity and fear. Oh. And all this footage will be captured and or projected on both black and white film and color. The footage is used for motivation and sadistic pleasure. Just know that the ultimate goal is absurdity. God, this is so mentally arduous. Okay. Gary is dolled up, sweaty in his tightly fitted French maid outfit and now finds himself coming and going in and out of consciousness while in the back of the van. No! Now, he, Gary, is duct taped on the nail bed in the jumbo jet. He is still, well, quite drugged and reeling from pain. On our in-flight journey to Margot, Afghanistan, Gary will be aptly fucked with a forced... Oh, pardon me. He'll be aptly fucked with and forced to eat some more of those delectable little cookies and forced to drink his own so-coveted Miller Lite that has also been whizzed in by me, along with my fellow minions, and I'll have acquired some frozen famous Mr. Ed, yes, a horse, the horse, who is no longer with us. But, like one of the above-forementioned Marthas, but nonetheless, there still is sufficient inter-genome name for horse here. Stand-ins that could have 
stored piss in some refrigerator out there somewhere in the Hollywood land. <laughs> because I say so, and if it didn't cost more money to print these words with red ink, I would. <laughs> so make pretend that they are red and very authoritative. authoritative. Hey, everybody's in the club. Oh, sorry, focus. Yum, you're in a bounds. Fuck balls. I nearly forgot to specifically share about all my minions and how I acquired their service. Except for the Craigslist emails. <laughs> Did I say singular or plural? Well, either way, let's double the number just for all good measure. First of all, my main man, my motherfucking partner, uh, William Hung's Doppeldanger appears. She bangs, she bangs. You know that guy? Actually, it's my midget's lover. Remember the Craigslist poach hoochie? She just so happens to be Asian. Not my midget tranny lover, but the William Hung double. Although she, that is obviously posing as a he, and as William Hung, who is also, interestingly enough, borderline retarded, fuck, just another failed Hollywood extra that I scooped up from Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, or was it Craigslist? Fuck, I'm hypoglycemic. Anyway, his, I mean her, whole gag was impersonating American Idol's only son, William Hung. You know, the dipshit who sang, she bangs, she bangs, she boogies. Anyway, that's right, I discovered him. While my lover and I were strolling down Sunset Boulevard as mentioned above, he, she, was next to an obviously strung out Hulk, Superman, Batman and Robin, Captain America, and the like. All those homeless junkie superheroes impersonating fuckwads out on Sunset Boulevard. Well, actually, I think they're pretty cool, but you may not, because you are a fucking fascist capitalistic sheep fuck and quite possibly tired from reading a hallucination, but fuck you! <laughs> it's mine! Anyway, just an offshoot. When I discovered my fancy-footed lover, one of many old Captain America, he was drunk and he had proceeded to get into a fistfight with the Hulk. During the altercation, Hulk's grimy shredded purple pants were beginning to loosen from the rubber-fitted fake muscle body contraption that had been curiously attached to him. To him. Mm. That's boring. Anyway, we arrive. Poof. In the desert, Margo, Afghanistan, on the nearest private landing strip, <laughs> there is a prefabricated scene. Imagine the most renowned Hollywood set design crew da -da 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 extrapolating all my whimsical desires. I just really want to land the jet and go through another transporting tripe scenario that sees us all get onto a really tricked out helicopter. Fuck! That's right, I wanted to take a helicopter to the jumbo jet from Missouri. Shit, okay, just pretend we did that. So however that needs to happen, it happens. Oh, oh, and I also want to borrow the land speeder. Personally, from George Lucas. Do you hear me out there, George? <laughs> I need that land speeder, son. Let's just incorporate enough space that I can do so because how awesome would it be to cruise this around a desert plus throw in CP-30 and R2-D2. It's a fucking deal. Yeah. Okay, cool, thanks. Allow your imagination to cut loose. Here because I'm anxiety riddled and feeling quite fatigued, actually. Yada yada yada. We land and unload. Gary is corralled and strapped to a gurney and quickly backhanded. <laughs> Again, the gurney will allow for easy transport to the helicopter and ta-da, we all arrive in that little special area in the desert. This is a little second grader's desk. There is a little second grader's desk rigged with the contraptions to aptly torture Gary. You know those ones with the armrest table thingy that has a little storage space right below the crotch region and can probably I can probably borrow a desk from North Kansas City High School, carte blanche, and with Dr. Vicky Lynn Baker's approval. <laughs> Thanks, teach. No child left behind. I take a fictitious. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I walk to the craft service table in the desert and grab a Kit Kat and a banana and take a quick needed shot of Jack Daniels, along with taking away a lemon lime Gatorade for later. Gary, after being fucked, 